Very warm welcome to the Trading Bell Show. Tonight we are at ISIFA, that's the Institute for Certified Financial and Investment Analysts. And we will be speaking to the CEO, that's Diana Morio. Can she be enlightening us about everything else about the mandate? And of course, enlightening you and I about where to get sound investment advice. That comes right after her profile. F.A. Diana Muriuki joined ISIFA as the Chief Executive Officer and Secretary to the Council on 1st November 2018. She has over 13 years' experience in the financial services industry, having worked at Actuarial Services East Africa Limited. She previously served as a Senior Manager Investments at Actuarial Services Limited, where she excelled in previous investment specialist, consultant and analyst assignments. During her tenure at Actuarial Services, she was instrumental in establishing processes and business relationships that enhanced business development. She has also served as investment officer and head of member services at Arima Fund Limited. She has a deep understanding and knowledge of the investment industry, having provided investment advisory services to numerous pension schemes in Kenya. She's a member of the Institute of Certified Investments and Financial Analysts, ISIFA, and the Chartered Institute for Securities and Investments, CC. She holds a Master's of Science in Finance, a Bachelor's of Economics and Statistics, both from the University of Nairobi, and a Graduate Diploma in Actuarial Science. Thank you so much, Diana, for coming, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, too, Maina. Thank you. You know, rarely in this industry do we have a chance to talk to a captain who is a lady, and so it's a pleasure to really have you once again and just to welcome you right here on the Trading Bell Show. And the first question that I want to ask you is purely about your mandate, uh, because it's been about five years, ten months, I think we spoke that on the side, but you've been in existence even longer in different forms, and so just to enlighten Kenyans and people who are watching, what is your mandate as ISIFA? Okay, thank you, first of all, Maina, for having me. And don't forget the FA, FA Diana Moyuki Maina. Yes. <laughs> we, we have to advocate for FA being the designatory letters for full members of the Institute. And it is for financial, financial analysts. Financial analysts, yes, yes, yes exactly. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Maina. Yes. So the Institute of Certified Investment and Financial Analysts, CIFA, was established under the Investment and Financial Analyst Act, uh, which was enacted on 8th December 2015. So as you have said, it's been around five years, uh, ten months since the enactment of the Act. So we can see that ISIFA has been in existence since then. However, it has existed as a professional body for investment and financial analysts uh, since 1997. But it has transformed, it has changed brands, it has changed names, and uh, now we are happy that we have an Act of Parliament. Uh, we are mandated by law yeah. to regulate the investment and financial analysis profession in Kenya uh, for both uh, for all certified investment and financial analysts <coughs> both in private and public practice and uh, we also have the mandate of registering and licensing certified investment and financial analysts also in uh, public and private practice in Kenya so that is our main mandate okay excellent. yes just from what you've spoken does it mean that anybody outside there because I promised them in the promo. Mm -hmm. Anybody outside there who is seeking to get advice uh, paid in investments, finance matters, it would be best for them to ask the people who are advising them whether they have been certified. Yes. yes, exactly. It's very important uh, yeah. because under Section 20 mm -hmm. of the Investment and Financial Analyst Act, it states that no person shall practice as a certified investment and financial analyst mm -hmm. unless they are registered. And there's even a penalty, a fine for persons who are practicing and they do not have a license or registered by CIFA, uh, they are they are liable to be fined a fine of 500,000 Kenya shillings if they are found practicing. And practicing as a certified investment and financial analyst mainly involves providing investment advice uh, to the public. Uh, it also involves uh, doing any investment and financial analyst work, anything related with uh, 
with uh, investment management, investment banking, stock brokerage, uh, if you're in any investment department, it is important that uh, persons who are in these particular departments or who are doing any investment and financial analysis work, they require to be registered and licensed by the Institute of Certified in and Investment, uh, the Institute of Certified Investment and Financial Analysts. Excellent. Yeah. There you have it. So just don't go to people who are not certified. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear from you. Of course, those are quite a number of good years. Are there some key milestones you would mention? One or two that you have achieved so far? I know there could be a number, but mm -hmm. just one or two. First and foremost is membership growth. Oh. Uh, we have seen tremendous uh, growth in the in the number of members that we have registered and licensed as investment and financial analysis professionals. Yeah. And uh, we are now uh, getting closer to the 1,000 mark. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2015 and starting, there were around 100 mm -hmm. persons uh, who are registered as investment and financial analysts. But now we're getting towards <coughs> the 1,000 mark. Okay. Yes, and uh, we're seeing a lot of traction. We're seeing more people mm -hmm. uh, require who are more people registering as a certified investment and financial analyst because there are requirements for one to register yeah. as an investment and financial analyst by CIFA and they need to have completed the Certified Investment and Financial Analyst course offered by CASNEB. Okay. Uh, depending on the category of membership, if you complete the Certified Investment and Financial Analyst course without any years of experience, you can join as an associate member. Okay. If you have more than three years of experience with a Certified Investment and Financial Analyst course, mm -hmm. you can join as a full member. Yeah. And uh, for practicing, you need at least four years of experience and you must be a full member of the institute. We also have fellows, and these are persons who have uh, really contributed to the, the growth, industry. the mm -hmm. industry of the profession, yeah. and this is just dependent on the council's mm -hmm. uh, appointment. So as you can see, we are seeing a membership growth. There are, uh, we has been a key milestone, yeah. and um, as we continue to grow also, you see, we are also aiming to empower the public in general, because the more uh, we have the more investment professionals there are, the more we expect that our neighbor, whoever who we we can talk to, we can be able to create awareness about uh, making wise investment decisions. So that's why I'm saying it's a critical milestone, Absolutely. and we hope it continue to grow. So that is one of the key milestone. Another milestone is on our continuous professional development prog programs. Of course, for our members, uh, it's a professional body. We expect our members to offer services above and beyond a normal person. Mm -hmm. Because we all know the word pro means you're meant to be very good at what you do. Absolutely. And by being very good at what you do, mm -hmm. you require professional development. You require to enhance your professional skills. And that is why we are very keen at ISIFA to ensure that all our members achieve a minimum requirement of the continuous professional development. Okay. Uh, the credits, call them credits, dependent on the hours uh, on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So that is a key milestone that we have been able to achieve. Uh, we were able to implement a mandatory CPD requirement, uh, the continuous professional de development requirement. We able to uh, to have it in place since 2019 mandatory for all our members and we have uh, we also we are also grateful for the covid what happened last year because it enabled us to adapt and to be agile to also provide online training solutions uh, in order to continue to enhance the professional development of our members so we have CPD programs both uh, uh, online uh, through training.isifa.co.ke and by the way some of these programs are accessible to non-members who just want to be empowered on uh, emerging issues so in the investment in yes training.isifa.co.ke mm -hmm. accessible to members and non-members so we are really we are thankful that was a milestone that we were able to move quickly yeah. uh, and uh, thanks to COVID we were able <laughs> to move quickly on that aside from the other physical events so CPD programs are a key milestone and the other of 
of course, I'd want to just uh, mention that uh, as a CIFA, we, we are really keen on ensuring that we collaborate with other partners uh, who have a similar goal in the investment and finance industry. And we have seen a, lot, a tremendous growth in the partnerships uh, since uh, 2015. And I will say traction started from around 2019, where we have been able to partner with, uh, and we have formal memorandum of understanding with uh, CASNEB being the examination body of the Certified Investment and Financial Analyst course. Mm -hmm. We have we have partnerships with the Capital Markets Authority, with the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, we have partnerships with um, with uh, Public Sector Accounting Standards Board. Okay. We have partnerships with the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investment. We are also affiliated. Actually, we are an associate member of the Association of Securities Ex uh, African Security Exchange Association, actually being the only African professional mm -hmm. body uh, being an associate, because the others are uh, the ones that we all know. Uh, there are two others internationally recognized uh, uh, investment and financial analyst professional body, but we are the only African uh, association mm -hmm. under us there. And we also have, uh, we also are a member of the Association of Professional Society of East Africa. Okay. So you can see uh, partnerships, uh, linkages, uh, we have been able to enhance them and we continue to enhance our partnerships. We've had partnerships with Konza, yeah. Technopolis uh, in terms of training their, their evaluation committee on how to make proper evaluation decisions when uh, on investments and uh, we also have partnerships, uh, understandings, uh, mutual understandings with the Institute of Human Resources management just to ensure that uh, employers are keen on employing uh, certified members of ISIFA in their investment departments. I actually want to look through the second one that you talked about, about the continuous training that you do for mm -hmm. your members. And I have a question based on that. That in your assessment, what is the adequacy of the you know Kenyan investment and financial analysts in determining emerging issues? And I'm talking about matters ESG, that's the environmental, social and governance, mm -hmm. and crypto assets factors in investments. What's the adequacy from your view? Oh, I'm very confident yes. in the adequacy of our members when it comes to emerging issues uh, in the investment and finance industry, as you have mentioned, ESG yes. and the cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as I see, that we normally conduct uh, continuous professional development programs on a monthly basis, and some and all of these uh, programs involve emerging issues. We have had several convers conversations around ESG. Like I don't expect a member not to know what greenwashing is or what DeFi is. I mean, these are things that we normally converse about uh, during our programs. And uh, the, uh, as I said, there, there are several on a monthly basis. We also have conferences that we conduct. And even on our training portal, we have all this... Um, all these programs on emerging issues in the investment and finance industry. So the, the adequacy uh, our members are set apart mm -hmm. to ensure that they are always kept up to date with the emerging issues in the investment and yeah. finance industry. All right. Yes. So we're speaking to F.A. Diana Morioki Maina, the CEO of ECFA, which is enlightening us much about not only the mandate, but things you need to check out. We take a short break, we'll be right back.